Today I've come to Cambridge and I'm looking around the city centre. I came to look at the buildings and get a general feel for the place, which we're doing now. And you can see that the streets are narrow and cobbled in many places. Uh, you can see that the town has a traditional market square and it's quite busy. You may even detect in the background uh, some musicians, maybe even a singer, who are keeping the audience entertained and hoping to collect a few coppers. And I don't mean policemen. Seen one bank, you've seen them all, I know, but I had to notice that the TSB seemed to have changed their logo a bit, colours particularly, and that Metro Bank were here. I've only ever seen them in London before, so they're obviously keen to be here, so much so that they've taken a two-storey building on a corner and it's quite prominent. And I need to cross the road to get over and have a closer look, but when I get to the other side, there's a wall of bikes to get through. Anyway, there's a way around them, and here we are at the front of the building. I'm going to have a quick look through the windows as I walk past, and the first thing I noticed, the, apart from the fact that Metro Bank are very informal, everybody just sits around in easy chairs, they're allowed to bring in their bikes and park them up. So as I walk past the first window, there's a row of bikes. Moving away from the banks, it's time for a coffee break. Uh, although it's sunny today, it's not that warm, so nobody's sitting outside Starbucks. And I'm going to go inside too. You can go and look at something else while I have a cup of coffee. As I came out of Starbucks, the bus station was about 200 yards up to the right and right on the edge of a fairly large park. So I checked that my bus wasn't due for about 20 minutes and I went for a little walk in the park where there were lots of bikes for some reason. The cafe that you can see in the picture just about um, is at the back of the bus station so the drivers are going around there in their brakes and having a cover. And the buses have something worth looking at as well. Um, there's a Cambridge busway. It's a guided busway. Um, I'm told it's the longest guided busway in the world so far. It's even longer than the one in Australia. And I'm going to bring in a professional broadcaster, because I'm retired, um, who has already done a report on the busway. And um, he's going to show you how to get your head knocked off by a guided bus. In 1950, one million cars populated the UK roads. Today, it's 30 million, which is why we all need one of these. <laughs> well, that was fun, wasn't it? Anyway, I'm getting on this bus. It goes to St Ives. Uh, I think it's a 12 to 15 mile stretch of the busway that we're going to be using today uh, on the bed of a, a disused railway line. Um, could go into that as well. I've already watched the YouTube videos about the old railway line. You can do that too if you want. But i um, concentrating on the bus today. And we're going to go back to Robert Bond's report because he talked to one of the drivers and, and the thing that he actually captured, which I didn't think to do, was the fact that the driver sits there with his hands on his knees. It, a guided busway means the, the driver doesn't need to steer. Watch this. Three. Robert, so there you go, no hands bus driving. Some of the original railway buildings can still be seen along the side of the busway, but they're not in particularly good condition. There's nothing being preserved. Um, what they have done is build new platforms and 
little bus halts and park and ride areas where you can actually join the busway and in some of those there are full refreshment facilities, ticket buying facilities and so on and other bus services run from these interconnection points. So they've organised the thing pretty well. This is the sort of thing you tend to miss when you go everywhere by car, but today I left my car in a car park and came for a ride on the bus. It's well worth it.